Okay, a little bit more comfy. The last video I'll probably record tonight. Because I'm going to be a drunken mess by the time my wife gets home. This is the uh, Svord Peasant Mini. Svord with a V. Uh, this is a knife made in New Zealand that uh, sells on Blade HQ for $10.95. And I was a dummy and bought it for $20 because I went to a retail store that uh, I won't name. But we'll, we'll just say it rhymes with... Uh, Blouse of Hades. Um, interesting store to walk in, but they charge full retail almost every single time. Kind of frustrating. Um, this is the Sword Peasant Mini, like I said. It's a pretty simple knife. You get a high carbon steel blade with uh, polypropylene or some sort of whatever plastic handles, two screws, friction folder. Um, pretty simple. There's your long tang that allows you to grip the blade and keep it open with your hand so you're not you're not going to close it on your hand as long as you're gripping it. Uh, supposedly this design or, uh, originated 400 years ago from ancient Roman times or, or something like that. I don't know how much I believe that. I guess it does seem plausible um, but this is a non-locking knife so you can sort of change its action yourself. The looser this pivot is the easier this rotation process will be and the tighter, tighter this pivot is, the tighter the blade sort of wedges in and locks into that point. So it can be tight here and loose here and it'll have some resistance to keep it from opening and then it'll fly open. I've got it sort of set to medium resistance so it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere at this point. It needs to be have pressure applied. This isn't really a pocket knife, I suppose. You probably want something to keep it from doing this in your pocket and cutting your hand open. Um, it's or, or at least put it in a tight pocket so that there's no way it can open slightly in your pocket. That's that's the main thing you want to take away from this knife. The make or break for this knife is it's cheap and it's got a pretty decent high carbon steel blade and it's got a cool grind honestly. And that's made in New Zealand. How many products do you have that are made in New Zealand? I bet you you got none, but I have one, and it's this. Um, and it's got a cool, like, symbol there. And because it's a higher carbon steel blade, you can patina it. I dunked this in Diet Coke for a couple hours to get this dark finish there. And then I polished up all the surfaces along this edge. I don't know how well that's coming across, but it's shiny. Nice mirror polish on all these surfaces but super dark on all of the flats. Um, and so that's just like a little aesthetic thing I did with this knife, which I really like. And that's, again, like I always say, aesthetics is my first decider on a knife. If the knife looks cool to me, looks interesting, looks attractive, that's a knife I buy. If it looks ugly, chances are it's not gonna be a knife I got. Unless it has maybe some historical, historical uh, significance, but even something like the uh, K55K, from Mercator, Mercator. Um, it's not a bad looking knife, honestly. Or the uh, another friction folder, the Hiko no Kami. Uh, not a bad looking knife. So I guess I'm still tied to that aesthetics decision making process. But this knife uh, is something I'll probably, maybe not probably, possibly eventually. Uh, get some custom scales for because I think that would be kind of fun to get some interesting wood or um, just different scales and the plain green because honestly that white bit in the plastic that bugs me a little bit um, and that's just from the stop pin inside there there's a stop pin right there that stops the blade from going any farther than that point right there so that hits somewhere in there um, this is a pretty solid knife Honestly, out of my collection, this is the knife that my wife uses the most uh, because it's not scary, I suppose. Um, it's just she she doesn't she doesn't feel like she's gonna cut herself when she's using this knife. It gets fairly sharp. The bl the grind was totally uneven when I got this. It's still kind of uneven. I need to get a proper sharpening system and get an even edge on this knife. Um, but for a ten or twenty dollar knife, you shouldn't expect too much from it, honestly. Uh, especially a primitive knife. One of the big issues that this knife had when I got it 
is this section right here was just straight metal and that was putting a sort of dent or a chip in this point in the blade and so the blade was dull at that point and that honestly kind of drove me nuts and so what I did was I took a piece of rubber and I traced out the hole from this pivot and I cut out a piece of rubber you can't see very well probably not at all but there's a piece of rubber wedged in there and so the blade just contacts the rubber instead of contacting the pin directly and that's what helps keep this tip from being chipped or dulled constantly by closing the knife. Um, this is a knife that's a lot of fun to play around with patinas with, play around with different finishes. Uh, you can see sort of it's wearing in the patina there from opening and closing the knife. Uh, the friction, that part of the friction folder, who knew, uh, is wearing away the patina a little bit and that's okay. That's one of the things I like about this knife. You can let it develop a natural patina. You can put your own forced patina on it. There's a lot of sort of customizability you can do. And as far as like getting a custom scale, these things probably wouldn't be that expensive to do. So this is the Svord Peasant Mini. Pretty good little budget knife. Um, certainly fun. Not something you would expect much from. So thanks for watching. Cheers.